right, everybody, welcome back to the channel. I'm excited to bring you another movie review. This one is Freud's Last Session, starring the incomparable Anthony Hopkins and Matthew Good. I was really excited to see this movie because it was something that kind of popped up in like my YouTube feed or something, and I was like, wait, what is this? Is like Sigmund Freud, C.S. Lewis, and I was like, wait, that looks like Anthony Hopkins. And so I was like, oh, this is like a, this is a movie, and I was like, when is it coming out? And I was like, dude, it's coming out like in a few days. So that was really cool. I got to have this kind of like really quick experience of like, what is this? This looks cool, here we are. So that, that was a lot of fun. And so I called up one of my buddies who is a big fan of C.S. Lewis, and I think, I'm not 100% sure, but I think it's based on a play, and it kind of feels like it. So as you know, I tend to drop spoilers. If you don't know, now you know. So there's probably gonna be some spoilers ahead, so just be aware of that. Anyway, I'm a big C.S. Lewis fan. I've read a lot of his books, obviously The Chronicles of Narnia and things beyond. I've read a lot of his theological stuff. I haven't read really any of Freud's like direct works, if you will, in terms of books or anything. I did learn about him a lot in college. I did a psychoanalysis of film class. We looked at a lot of Freud's you know, methodologies and, and ideologies when we were going through that. And so I'm uh, you know, at least somewhat familiar with him and obviously he had a big impact on culture. But so did C.S. Lewis. And I think that's why the concept of the film was so fascinating to me. And I looked into it a little bit and they even kind of say in the film, it's like, we don't know for sure if they ever met, um, but apparently near the end of Freud's life, he met with an unnamed Oxford Don. So it is a possibility, but we don't really know that. And whatever the case, it, it makes for an interesting idea and interesting, like, what would these thinkers, what would these, you know, pretty unique individuals say to each other? What would they talk about? And obviously there's a lot of, discourse of like is God real is he not if he is is he good like what what, what happens to your to your uh, belief system if God truly is real or if he's not you know it's a lot of back and forth like that and then obviously it gets into more F Freud's theories about you know what he believes about everything and and how it's more secular and and, and how also he admits that he could be wrong about a lot of things. Anyway, I, I was excited to check this out and we go to see it and I was expecting it to kind of almost take place in in one main set piece. Uh, the trailer kind of makes it seem like it'll be that way, but it was cool because it, it, it wasn't. A lot of it did take place in like Freud's study or, or living room, whatever it was, I think it was his study. But also there's there's several flashbacks, there's kind of these dream sequences, there's occasional moments where they, they move away from that space. And I think they did it in a way that helped the flow of everything. And to me, it's always fun to just watch great actors work. Obviously, you, you want the writing to be good. You want the characters to be good. And obviously, they're basing it off of real people. So that's where this film, I think, kind of can struggle a little bit, depending on how familiar you are with these uh, real people. But whatever the case, Anthony Hopkins, man, he's just so good. Like, I don't know if I've ever watched a single one of his performances and be like, hmm, that was just not good, or that was bad, or he could he could have done better. Like, no, it, it, he's just so good. And like, he's so experienced, he's done it for so long. You know, I, I'm watching this guy and his little, like the way he like moves his body and like, he might like scratch himself. Or what, he has these little idiosyncrasies, you know, he's, or he'll like, I wouldn't say mumble, but he's just always like every part of him is acting, <laughs> like, and not to the way, not to a point where it's distracting, like he's trying too hard. He's just so like embodies his character, and he, I don't know his process exactly, like I don't know how he rehearses or, or whatever, but he just knows his characters so well, and he's so comfortable and and, and natural in his acting. And Matthew Good, uh, I think he did a great job. I haven't seen him in a ton of things, but I have seen him. In, in you know a few films but solid actor but now you get to a point of like historical accuracy does that matter does it not are you going to lean really heavy in kind of the the what if direction or are you going to be more historical are you going to blend the two well and that's that's what's difficult to for me to kind of fully put my finger on like i talked to my friend after the movie what he thought about it and I think we generally had a similar consensus. I think I enjoyed it a little bit more than he did, but I totally get his points and I essentially agree with him. 
It's just we both have read a lot of C.S. Lewis. There's a scene with uh, J.R.R. Tolkien that talks to Lewis, which is really cool. Again, because we're, we're both fans of Tolkien as well. But it's a really short scene. And I think we both agreed that it, it felt very truncated and there's just so much like depth in those conversations that they had together and, and how Tolkien really uh, helped open Lewis's eyes to the fact that God is real and the fact that God is the one true myth. Because they had that conversation of how like they both really like myths and, and C.S. Lewis was really, really into mythology and myths and Tolkien was pointing out to him, it's like, well, you know, what if God is the one true myth? And you know, he is. So like, it, it just, it was, it felt kind of rushed. It just felt like there could have been more, more context and more clarity there. Cause I don't know if they truly conveyed what the two were going through in the middle of that conversation. Like what Lewis was really struggling with, what he was really trying to grapple with and, and if he really latched onto it. But again, you, you can't strictly blame the actors because it, it's just written that way. It's just kind of written short. So I think, they did a pretty good job. It just left us wanting more for sure in that sequence. I think Matthew does a good job with his portrayal of Lewis in the context of what they gave him in the script. It's hard because it, and, and this was another reason why we were so excited to see it as well. It's a little, you know, bit of trivia, but like Anthony Hopkins actually played C.S. Lewis in the 90s in a movie called Shadowlands. And we had a similar kind of feeling about that movie as well. It wasn't the best, but you know, Anthony Hopkins is so good and it's just fun because we're so interested in these guys and in the, the amazing stories that they've created and how they've really shaped Western culture in, in a huge way, written some of the greatest stories ever told, uh, beloved by, you know, millions of people all over the world. So, so we have a great affinity for these guys and, and their storytelling and that it be told in a way that is true to who they are and what they stood for and what they believed so i think that's what what's funny about this movie is it's like it's made like exactly for people like me and my friend but at the same time we're also going to be some of the harsher critics it's not that we're strictly trying to be harsh like we want to enjoy the movie but like i said the, the, these guys and their stories mean so much to us as they do so many other people so i applaud them for making the effort as the film goes and they talk about all these things, you're getting to the end and, and you realize that Freud is gonna die soon and what that means and, and and how that actually played out in his life. And so the film kind of explains, you know, how Freud played a part in his end. There's the, the morality of all of that, what Lewis thinks about that when he makes him aware of it. Again, we don't know what Lewis did or would have thought about that strictly because they, as far as we know, we don't know if they have or actually a conversation with each other but it raises a lot of interesting questions uh, both actors do a good job of, of like the the back and forth and like here's this point here's this counterpoint and they have a good flow to it i think the pacing could have been a little bit faster i didn't think it was that bad but i think some people could find it a little boring honestly but even so like there's it's still good acting it's still interesting conversation i think it does fall flat sometimes because there is so much that they're talking about and there and there are these topics that are like really important and sometimes they can feel brushed over sometimes you you know maybe they focus a little too much on something that's not as important for dramatic effect so so, so it's 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 a little i don't want to use the word messy but it, it just it's not as clear as maybe i would like it to be but to each his own, okay? Personal opinion, personal preference. Now, the way the film ends, I, I didn't know how they were gonna end it. I wasn't sure, and I wasn't sure if I was gonna like it, because it's like, okay, are you gonna come at the ending with like, Freud won the, the arguments, or Lewis won the arguments, or God exists, or God doesn't exist. Like, I, I didn't know, I didn't know what the end was gonna be. I didn't know what the overall message was necessarily. Now, normally, the way this movie ended might probably bother me, but I think it was actually kind of fitting. Now, if I had made the film, I might've done things differently. I might've had a more clear, direct kind of message at the end, but I, I don't know that for sure. But suffice it to say, it kind of just ended with like, the, there was no real clear, clear winner in terms of like arguing ideas. It was kind of like, I still hold to my beliefs, I also still hold to my beliefs, but it was this like, 
mutual kind of like we can still have a conversation even though we disagree so it the, it the movie didn't tout like a certain like winner if you will and so I, I don't know even now strictly how i feel about that i kind of appreciate it because there could have been an outcome where i was like well man i i hate this ending because i i disagree with those ideas or whatever but at the same time i think it was kind of smart because they almost i feel like tried to play it out as if how would the conversation have really ended? So it's different in, in the way that they tell the story is like, there is a story, you know, and, and Freud's daughter is in it. And, and there's conversation about uh, Lewis's past as well as Freud's and, and you know, relational dynamics at home. And, and, and so th there's interesting things that, you know, in a way it does tell a story, but it is fairly simplistic, I guess, in that story. and. I think it just tries to present these two guys and how they're both super influential and at the end of the day it's like this is what we think it would end like and, and so I, I don't want that to sound like the movie has no merit or that um, then both of these figures had nothing to say of importance but it's hard it's like how do you end that and how do you do it in a way that doesn't alienate half of your audience or 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 make everyone hate it or whatever. And so like, I, I don't know. And so that kind of leads me to my overall feelings about the movie. And is that it's okay. It's not great. It's not terrible. There were moments that I, I did enjoy. And like I said, from a pure, just like, oh, I like to watch these actors. Like, yeah. And like, I would, I can see myself watching it again. I don't see myself rushing to watch it again. But, but still, I, we, me and my friend, we also appreciated that they're making movies like this. I just, I'm so, <laughs> I've been so bored by so many films that came out over the last year, over the last several years, and how there's just so much propaganda and different crazy ideologies just jammed into storytelling for the sake of being there, for the sake of like virtue signaling or whatever else. Like, I, it's just, you know, I, I don't mind if you wanna, take a stand on something or, you know, or, or, or say something that's important to you, that's fine. But there's a point where it's, it's like you have no tact. There's a point where you actually have no art form because it's like, it's getting to the point where it's not even subtle. Not that I strictly want it to even be subtle, but it's like, you know, you, it's just so like, I, I'm tired of films trying to just preach to me. <laughs> like, entertain me, please. Like. I understand people have different opinions and whatever. We come to the movies for escapism. We come to be entertained and, and yes, to learn and to broaden our horizons, but please do it in an artful way, you know? And I guess what I, like I said, what I enjoyed about this movie is like, like, yeah, the, the, it's got some substance to it, even though the, the story in itself is fairly simplistic, even though, you know, like I said, I don't feel like there was like a clear winner in the outcome of, of their overall conversations but it's it's bringing up things that we all struggle with life death and god you know eternity you know and and what does that mean and what does that mean in in the circles around you and in society and what does that mean for the future so maybe not perfect execution maybe some of the dialogue was a little soft in certain areas you know they could have hit harder or whatever that's okay. I, I like the fact that they're presenting higher ideals and higher forms of thinking and, and you know, trying to get you to maybe have a conversation with somebody else and, and, and hash some of those things out or, or see what someone thinks about it. I think that is way more helpful, even if the movie isn't like super, super entertaining or, or incredibly historically accurate. I still think there's merit in a film like that versus something that's just trying to you know make me feel bad about something and so okay well, I gotta go I guess change the world because I'm not perfect and no one else around me is I don't know I, I, I'm, I'm rambling a little bit so I apologize but anyway I would definitely say check it out if you're interested and you know if anything I would hope that it would inspire you to to read like C.S. Lewis or like J.R.R. Tolkien and broaden your horizons there and get to really uh, into their stories if you haven't. You know, I'm sure you know, you've know you consumed their stories in some form of media, whether it's books, movies, television. 
but to, to read their own words and to really get into their stories. And especially from guys who are so masterful, I think it'll give you a deeper appreciation for stories in general, however you consume them, movies, books, television. So that's my two cents on that. I really hope you guys enjoyed this review. If you did, please, you know, like, share, subscribe, all that stuff, comment below. If you liked it, let me know. If you didn't like it, let me know. I love having conversation. I love explaining, you know, like why I like this character, why I didn't like this character, whatever. I really like having that conversation. So feel free to drop comments. Thank you guys so much for your time as always. And I will see you in the next video.